Hey guys. How are you doing? Good. Can I give you some information while we're here today? Sure. That's yours. And we're educating the high school students since there's ha since there's pregnancies in the high school unit. Sir, is that a mature way to act? That's really mature. Hey guys. Long thick stack. Fuck hey. hey, you arguing, man? Yeah, man. Fuck this. Fuck this shit, bro. Why are you upset, man? Hey, come on back, man. Make it make your argument, man. It's all good. Hey, we're not hating on you, fam. Come on back. Hey, come on back. That was your come on, man. It's all good. Why is it all the hate, man? How's it going, man? Hey, I'm Todd. Gobi? Hey, good to meet you, man. So. Hey, Gobi. Hey, that man had a profound argument. What do you think, man? Oh, man. Hey, are you Christian, brother? Yes, sir. Awesome. Where do you go to church? Uh, Preston Church. Preston Church? Oh, what kind of church is that? It's... Don't watch out behind me. <laughs> huh? Baptist Church. Oh, Baptist Church. Awesome. Sweet. Hey, are you, like, involved in the church? Awesome. What do you, how, how often do you hey, can I give you one of these, man? on the issue of the abortion holocaust that's going on in the nation of I've heard it like once or twice. You've heard it once or twice. All right, now I'm not going to ask you to say the name of your pastor, but what do you, do you believe that that's right? If, if, if Christians in a nation that kills one kid every 30 seconds, looks like that. A lot of them look like that. One kid every 30 seconds. What do you think the Christian responsibility is in life of that? Like, I'll put it this way. If three-year-olds were being killed in America today, three-year-olds, what do you think Christian churches would do? Or at least should do? Something to stop it. Something to stop it, right? Like, cry out, cry out to God, hey, God, give us the power to stop it. Well, let's go out to these places where, it, where it's at. Let's, let's talk to these people. Let's do something, right, to stop it. Now, because the baby is in the place of the incarnation where Jesus Christ came to save mankind in the womb, because the baby is there, all of a sudden, it's not as human. Did that make sense? You see what I mean? So, where we used to enslave black people because of the color of their skin and steal their person and say that they're not people, in 1857, there was a Supreme Court ruling that said, a 7-2 decision, the Dred Scott versus Sanford case, that said that the black person was property and was not actual person. In 1973, we have another Supreme Court case that says the unborn human being is just property, it's not a person, it's not protected under the Constitution. Now, there's no difference between a person and a human being. All human beings are human beings and they're created in the image of God. And so, we had racism in, as, the, as the ideology behind slavery, as the reprehensible, ugly ideology, mindset behind slavery, and today we have something called ageism. And so, we often look at the churches in Germany during the Holocaust and like, how could they have done nothing with these Jews that just get 6 million Jews, 11 million uh, undesirables in total in the concentration camps? How could the Christians have done nothing? But all we have to do is look at ourselves in our society and say 60 million since 1973 in Roe v. Wade. 60 million. And the Bible is clear. Jesus said, what you do to the least in society, you do to me. Me! It's like we're doing this to Jesus himself. And so the Christian responsibility seems to be an obvious one. That we need to repent. Do you know what repenting means? Not exactly. Okay. The word repent, in Hebrew actually in the Old Testament, the word is shoot. And it means make a sharp U-turn in your thinking. So right now the American churches, you go to church, you're a good Christian kid. I'm sure that there's a lot of good Christians in your churches. Everybody thinks that we're doing this the right way and all that. But we are living a life of, our, of comfort for ourselves. We're loving ourselves more than our neighbor. And Jesus said, when Jesus was asked what the two greatest commandments are, when Jesus was asked what the two greatest commandments are, it was love God and love your neighbor. And so there's no way as a Christian we can say that we're loving our unborn neighbor as ourselves, is there? No. There's no possible way. So that's what we're calling Christians to do. I pray that you hear this message and that you are a beacon. A beacon is someone that carries carries this message into your church. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, yeah, these two, man. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Hey, man. How'd you like that pamphlet yesterday? You like it? Yeah. Did you get this one, too? Yeah. Yeah. So you. You What's your name? Ryan. My name is Joe. It's nice to meet you. Are you a Christian, Ryan? Well, what, uh, uh, what, what God do you, uh, do you believe? You're a Muslim. Yeah. So, uh, what would you say be the difference between Christianity and Islam? If you 
had to define it. What would you say is the difference? It would be the identity of Jesus Christ, right? Okay. So do you know what Islam teaches about Jesus Christ? And do you know what Christianity teaches about Jesus Christ? The linchpin, the, the central point of Christianity is that the only way, you know that there's evil in the world, correct? There is evil. And so Islam teaches that evil is defeated just by God basically commanding from on high, right? God makes a command and evil is defeated somehow in the end. Christianity says that the actual person needs to be exchanged. So in other words, you can't pay for your own sin. You've done bad things in your life, correct? You've stolen, maybe you've, you've done things like that. Christianity says that you need yourself to be exchanged by the person of God. Do you need God actually to live through you and to take your life and to set it aside and so that God would actually live his life through you? That's what Christianity teaches and accomplished in Jesus Christ, that there is a transaction that needs to take place. That your nature needs to be switched for the nature of God, and that only happens through Jesus Christ. Okay, I wanted to, to make that clear with you because everything depends on it. Okay? Thank you. Every day, yes. So God bless you. Yeah.